I believe that art of the future is art without objects. This is just pure transmission of energy between the viewer and the artist. To me, mixed reality is this answer. This was a unique opportunity to take the most legendary artists working now and capture them in such a way that they are translatable forever. If you're a collector, you're trying to find works that break new ground. We here at Christie's believe that this is that. And it will be the first time that a mixed reality artwork is sold at auction. There was always a question what you buy when you buy performance. You buy the video or you buy the edition of photographs. Here, you actually can have the artist's presence in your collection. The first thing that we had to figure out was you had to feel that you were in the room with Marina, not a document of Marina. The HoloLens 2 was created by people who quite clearly have an interest in the audience forgetting that they are using technology. So the purest expression of artistic intent can happen. I really want viewer to be with me in the space in here and now. The life is dealing with what is going to stay after I'm not there anymore. And I can face myself. And that's a frightening experience. Really like you're facing your own ghost. There is always this great idea of immortality. Once you die, the work will never die because the work of art can continue. In performance, the piece is only in the memory of the audience and nowhere else. Here, I am kept forever. Spirit cooking has been brought to the forefront all of a sudden. It's come out of the dark into the light. It's been around forever. And the people that are in power in our government and around the world, as well as celebrities and all other people of means, have followed this for the longest time. This is nothing new. There is nothing new under the sun. In the end, all things will become known. And that's exactly what we're seeing happening right now. This woman, Marina Abramovic, is doing a ritual called spirit cooking. And if you look at the news, you look around, this is all over the place now. The alleged that the candidate running for president right now, the presidential selection for 2016, is involved with this, as well as Podesta and all other people. This has been around for a long time. This is nothing new at all. The one thing I want to point out in this video right here is the fact that she has what's known as a golem in the corner and the ritual that she does with the said golem, as well as the fact that she's painting with breast milk, menstrual blood, sperm, feces and urine and she's also giving a detailed description of what to do to actually carry out this particular ritual which is very extensive they zoom in on it to give it the theatrical air of mystery so to speak but notice in the corner what appears to be a golem or a homunculus what is that you ask i'll show you watch this this video, Age of Deceit 2, made by Gon Shimura from Face Like the Sun, can explain it better than I, but this is nothing new. This all goes back to the works by Aleister Crowley, and again, all the rich and wealthy people that have followed his work over the years. It should be clear by now that the modern technological and scientific agenda is built upon the same spiritual philosophies as ancient alchemy. The desire for man to create artificial life and as a result play God is nothing new. One of the goals for the alchemists was to create what is known as the Golem, an animated anthropomorphic being created purely out of inanimate matter through magical workings. Hebrew word Golem is used once in the Bible and is found in Psalms 139.16, translated as unformed substance quote your eyes saw my unformed substance in your book were written every one of them the days that were formed for me when as yet there was none of them according to talmudic legends adam 
was initially created by God as a golem, or as a body without a soul, for the first 12 hours of his existence. The substance that gave his mindless body a soul was the breath of God. It was at this point that man became the image bearers of God. Quote, then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living soul. While it is appropriate for God himself to create life out of non-life, it is easy to see that man attempting to do the same is in essence playing out the lie that was promised to us before the fall of mankind. The methods to form a golem were vast and complex, involving everything from meditative techniques, numerological markings, and ritual chanting. There are many Jewish traditions of holy rabbis and sages creating a golem. For example, when Eliezer of Worms, a 12th century Talmudist and mystic, commented on the Sefer Yezerah, or what is known as the Book of Formation, one of the earliest Kabbalistic writings, he gave a detailed and complex report of how to form a golem through advanced spiritual meditative techniques called the two to one gates. But perhaps the most famous golem is the one allegedly created by Rabbi Yehuda Levi ben Betzalel of Prague, known as the Maharal, in the 16th century. The legend goes that the Maharal created a golem named Yosel to help save the Jews of Prague from the blood libel, an early form of anti-Semitism where cults derived from Roman Catholicism falsely accused the Jews for kidnapping and murdering children to use their blood in religious rituals. After fulfilling his purpose, the golem Yosel was de-animated by the Maharal. It is widely believed that Yosel's body was stored and still lays in the attic of Prague's old new synagogue, a building that was curiously not destroyed by the Nazis in World War II. In fact, it is believed that the Gestapo didn't even enter the attic when they took hold of the synagogue. This is no surprise since it is well known that Hitler spoke often of the Ubermensch to describe the National Socialist agenda of creating a biological superior Aryan race that would rule the earth for 1,000 years. In alchemy, it was the 16th century alchemist and occultist named Paracelsus who described how to create the golem, referred to as the homunculus in alchemical terms. In the Hermetic and Alchemical Writings of Paracelsus, he said, quote, But neither must we by any means forget the generation of homunculi, for there is some truth in this thing, although for a long time it was held in a most occult manner and with secrecy, while there was no little doubt and question among some of the old philosophers whether it was possible to nature and art that a man should be begotten without the female body and the natural womb. In order to accomplish it, you must proceed thus, that the semen of a man putrefied by itself in a sealed cucurbite with the highest putrefaction, until it begins to live, move, and be agitated, which can easily be seen. If now, after this, it be every day nourished and fed cautiously and prudently with the arcanum of human blood, and kept for forty weeks in the perpetual and equal heat, it becomes thenceforth a true and living infant, having all the members of a child that is born from a woman, but much smaller. This we call a homunculus, and it should be afterwards educated with the greatest care and zeal until it grows up and begins to display intelligence. Now this is one of the greatest secrets which God has revealed to mortal and fallible man. It is a miracle and marvel of God, an arcanum above arcana, and deserves to be kept secret until the last times, when there shall be nothing hidden, but all things shall be made manifest. In more recent times, it was the pioneer rocket fuel scientist and occultist Jack Parsons and the founder of Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard, who performed magical ceremonies and rituals called Babylon Working, carrying on the work done by occultist Aleister Crowley, who called himself the Great Beast 666. Parsons and Hubbard claimed to make contact with the spiritual realm to unleash an entity of a divine female named Babylon. But perhaps the most interesting part of all the rituals performed by Parsons and Hubbard was that of what is called the mannequin. The accounts of the mannequin begins with a huge steel container codenamed Jumbo that accompanied the first atomic bomb explosion on the Trinity site in New Mexico on July 16, 1945. The Brookings Institute released a short explanation of Jumbo in February of 2013, which stated, quote, As preparations for the first nuclear weapons test, General Leslie Groves, the head of the Manhattan Project, began to worry about what would 
happen if the test was a failure. With a very limited supply of plutonium then available, a failure could scatter tens of millions of dollars of the precious element across the New Mexico desert. To avoid this problem, a massive steel vessel to contain the explosion was built at a cost of $142 million. Nicknamed Jumbo, the container weighed 214 tons, was 25 feet long, 12 feet wide, and had walls 14 inches thick. According to occult investigators and conspiracy theorists James Shelby Downard and William N. Grimstead, Jumbo contained within it what Aleister Crowley had called the mannequin, an inanimate body which was inundated with nuclear energy, thus producing a real homunculus, or gullum. Regardless of whether or not the stories of these occult practices to produce soulless life forms are true or not, it doesn't make much difference with what we are facing on the horizon. What we will come to discover is that Satan's grand agenda is to produce his own golem or homunculi out of the human race, so that we might abandon the image of God in exchange for the image of the beast. Really like you're facing your own ghost. There is always this great idea of immortality. Once you die, the work will never die because the work of art can continue. In performance, the piece is only in the memory of the audience and nowhere else. Here, I am kept forever. Good going to happen. I really believe that. There's something very good going to happen. We have to get back. So think of it in this horrible period, this horrible, dark period where this, this monster came and, and uh, worked its horrible, horrible spell over the world, 184 countries as of this morning, 184 countries. Something good going to happen. I really believe that. There's something very good going to happen. We have to get back. I really believe that there's something very good going to happen. We have to get back. So think of it in this horrible period, this horrible, dark period where this this monster came and, and uh, worked its horrible, horrible spell over the world, 184 countries. Period. This horrible, dark period where this, this monster came and, and uh, worked its horrible, horrible spell over the world. I am kept forever.